Our New Yorkshire television with a time just coming up to one minute past ten. We join ITN for the national and international news. The news from ITM. Free at last, Nelson Mandela ends 27 years in jail. He tells the crowds the armed struggle has to continue. Violence in Cape Town as police open fire. And Soweto prepares for an historic homecoming. Good evening from Cape Town, at the end of a day on which South Africa's most famous son, Nelson Mandela, left the prison gates behind him and walked to freedom. Thousands of people lined the route of his journey into the city, and thousands more crammed dangerously into the city square to hear the voice of a man who hasn't spoken for himself for 27 years. It was not all free of incident. Police fired on looters and there were injuries, but nothing could detract from Nelson Mandela's day. This was the moment the world paused to applaud. The day the myth yielded to the man and Nelson Mandela walked to freedom. His steps were firm, his gait measured and deliberate, betraying only the hesitation that comes of a man thrust into the spotlight again after 27 years. The crowd outside the gate of Mr. Mandela's last prison was small. The authorities had discouraged any mass gathering here with injunctions and roadblocks. These were the few who were undeterred. The Mandela's were soon engulfed. A few steps more, a gesture of solidarity and a friendly wave, and Nelson Mandela was about to set out again on the next instalment of his political odyssey. A small convoy was to accompany Nelson Mandela into town. Behind him, the prison gates. Ahead of him, a multiplicity of questions and anxieties about the future of this country. Mr. Mandela will clearly need the support of these people in the weeks to come. In his long absence, the political landscape of this country has changed. Expectations are high, and most of them centre on him. A man who has spent more than a third of his life in prison, and who has driven into Cape Town today in style. At a rally in the city centre here tonight, Mr Mandela told his supporters that the armed struggle has to continue. But he did say too that he was willing to test the climate for negotiations. Kevin Dunn was in the city square long before Mr Mandela arrived. As Nelson Mandela was tasting his first minutes of freedom, his people poured into Cape Town to welcome him. For years, the release of Nelson Mandela had been their rallying cry in the townships. Today, it was to become reality in the heart of the white city of Cape Town, where they thronged in their tens of thousands in front of City Hall. There are generations of blacks who have waited a lifetime to see and hear Nelson Mandela and their enthusiasm is unbridled, their passion unbound. There was no holding back the crowd. At times the crush was too much, the danger of tragedy very real. Dozens of people needed medical attention. But as they waited in the square, ugly violence broke out on its edge. It seemed to begin with small-scale looting and vandalism, but the police response was fierce. One youth fell beside us, peppered by birdshot. Dozens were injured by volleys of shotgun fire. They shoot me! And still within yards of the mass rally, the police continued shooting directly at the crowd. First aid volunteers rushed to help those who fell under the fire. Miraculously, order was somehow maintained in the square, where after hours of waiting, they were rewarded by the arrival of Nelson Mandela's motorcade, which was immediately mobbed. 
minutes later and the man many must have believed they would never live to see appeared on the balcony of the city hall to be delivered to his people. He greeted them, he thanked them and prepared to deliver his first public statement for 27 years. The veteran leader's defiance was undiminished as he swiftly stated the ANC could not yet renounce the armed struggle. It matters which necessitated the armed struggle still exists today. We have no option but to continue. The hope that the climate conducive to a negotiated settlement would be created soon so that they may no longer be the means for the armed force. President de Klerk, he said, had taken real positive steps, but Mr. Mandela listed further preconditions for negotiations. The immediate ending of the state of emergency and the free of all and not only some political prisons. The black majority, he said, must seize the moment for change. Our struggle has reached a decisive moment. We call on our people to see this moment so that the process towards democracy is rapid and uninterrupted. We have waited too long for our freedom. And finally, he addressed the international community. We call on the international community to continue the campaign to isolate the apartheid regime. To lift tensions now would be to run the risk of aborting the process towards the complete eradication of a party. Our march to freedom is irreversible. We must not allow fear to stand in our way. At the end of his first day of freedom, Nelson Mandela stood before his people to sing the black nationalist anthem, freed into a future of political uncertainty, but freed into a South Africa in which he will surely determine its destiny. Kevin Dunn, ITN, Cape Town. Late tonight in Cape Town, Nelson Mandela with his wife at his side was celebrating his freedom with friends from around the world. He looked relaxed and was in a mood to joke. Downstairs here, when I saw the crowd and how enthusiastic they are, I wondered whether it was not better for me to remain in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. The American civil rights leader, Jesse Jackson, told Mandela he'd been a great inspiration to all those fighting apartheid. After an emotional day, it was clear there were some feelings that words alone just couldn't express. From Cape Town, the focus switches tonight to Johannesburg and to Soweto. Sowetans say that only when Mr. Mandela is welcomed by his countrymen there will he rarely have come home. Edward Sturton spent the day in Soweto. They flowed up the hill to Nelson Mandela's home in their thousands. The desire to celebrate and the hope of seeing him in person drew them, even though Soweto probably won't regain its most famous citizen until tomorrow. By tonight, the streets outside his house had become a vast dance floor. Crossed fingers for the future, pleasure in the present. The celebrations continued despite the occasional downpour. This is not the season for rain, but in the last week, the people of Soweto have become accustomed to surprises. Johannesburg's whites could not remain unaware of the feelings of Soweto's blacks. The giant party spilled over into the city centre. 
members of the ANC youth movement heard of Nelson Mandela's freedom at a rally in a township stadium. When we receive Comrade Nelson tomorrow, let us do it in a dignified manner, in a disciplined manner. Manda! The ANC is now more conscious than ever of the need to ensure that tomorrow too passes off peacefully in the township. Edward Sturton, ITN, Soweto. Back now to Sue Carpenter in London.